people of God, we are ready to worship. Stand if you choose. Let us raise our voices together in our responsive call to worship. The day came and they were all in one place. In one place. In one place. Being together, being in one space, breathing the same air, saying the same words had seemed like the most important thing. The most important thing. Then there was a sound like a rush of wind. Then there was a sound, the sound of things changing. Then there was a sound, suddenly nothing was the same. Those who were gathered received new languages. Those who were gathered received new dialects. Those who were gathered received new understanding. Those who were gathered received new power. Those who were gathered received the Holy Spirit in a new way. It became clear immediately that what was important had changed. Immediately it was clear what was important had changed. What was important had changed immediately. That was clear. Being in one space was not a priority. Speaking in unison was not a priority. Being all together to breathe the same air was not a priority. The power of the Holy Spirit rearranged their priorities to align them with God's. God's priority of diversity. God's priority of widespread grace. God's priority of neighbors and community. God's priority of stepping out, reaching out, being out in the world. The world that God loves. The world that is God's priority. Being aligned with God's priorities, it felt, it feels like being on fire. Friends, let us pray together our opening prayer. Holy God, send your spirit upon your church in this time and all these places. Open wide our hearts, stir our spirits, and charge up our courage that we may be your witnesses, proclaiming to the world your mighty deeds of power in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us raise our voices in song, hymn number 295 in our hymnal, Go to the World.
Brothers and sisters, God not only desires our repentance, but longs for to offer us forgiveness. Therefore, cast all your anxiety on God, because God cares for you eternally. Let us pray together our prayer of confession. Lord Jesus Christ, we admit that we have not always been eager to follow you into uncharted territory. Yet now we are impatient and do not want to wait to find out where you are leading us next. You call us, you commission us, you empower us to be your witnesses. We offer our prayers for your church, striving to be faithful in the places you have planted us, even when we are apart, even behind closed doors, even in virtual space. Your power of resurrection life is greater than we can fathom, and we pray that it would be visible through and among us, even in these days, even in our scattered places, even in the midst of the mystery. In the power of the Holy Spirit, remake your body once again. Amen. God is in the water that rains from heaven. God is in the winds that blow where they will blow. God is ever and always moving through our lives, making things new, renewing us. Know, brothers and sisters, that you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Fold that down, make a nice crease, 
So now you have got it divided into four triangles, okay? So now you want to turn it so that it looks like a square in front of you and flip it over, okay? So now you're going to fold it into a rectangle shape. So get those two corners up so that they match the other two corners and then fold it and crease it really good, okay? Open that up. Give it another little quarter turn and fold another rectangle. Make that crease really good. Okay. And then open that up. All right. Now, now what we're going to do, this is the first kind of hard fold. Put it in front of you so that it's like a diamond again. So you have one point in front of you. Okay. And then take the point that is farthest away from you and fold it down to meet the point on the bottom. So you're making a fold here and you're going to take the two sides, the points on the sides, and you're going to fold those in. Okay, now it's going to be a little easier because you've got those creases there. So fold them in, the ones on the side, fold them in. You're just going to fold along the creases that you just made. So just gently let your fingers guide them into those creases. And now you've got a small square or diamond. Okay, so now, now that you've got this small square in front of you, again, you're going to take the sides here. You're going to take the side points and fold this side into the middle. Okay, and the middle is where you have a crease already. So fold that in and then do it with the other side. Fold that side in. those creases really good. Now open it up and fold the top down. So you're folding down a triangle on the top. And that's going to be the thickest fold you've got so far, so you're going to have to work to, to make that a nice crease. Okay. So now open that all up. Okay. So here's what we're going to do now. Take the bottom, take a hold of the bottom point, just take the top layer of paper and pull that up. It's like you're making a big, wide mouth opening up, like a bird's beak opening up really wide. Pull that all the way up, and then you're going to fold the sides in, folding everything along the creases that you already have. So again, just kind of let your fingers gently find those creases for the paper and then fold it down. So you've got this long diamond shape now. Flip it over, you're going to do the same thing on the other side. So first you have to fold the sides into the middle on each side so that they meet in the middle. Open them up, fold the top down, and triangle on the top, fold that down. Okay, and then you open that all up, and the same thing, you're going to take the top layer and open it up like a big bird's feet opening up really wide. Find those creases that you've made and be gentle with the paper and uh, just let your fingers find those creases and ease the paper into those creases. Okay, so now I've got this long diamond on both sides here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to fold the sides in again, so it's getting narrower and narrower. Fold this side in, and then fold the other side in. Okay, make those creases really hard. Then turn it over and do the same thing. Fold in one side, and fold in the other side. So now you see you've got this long kind of diamond shape, and it's got two, it's got two legs that can move back and forth like that, okay? So what we're going to do with these two legs is we're going to fold them up, each one up. But we're not going to fold it straight up, we're going to fold it up at an angle, okay? So I'm going to fold this one up, make a nice crease, 
and then fold the other side up, make a nice crease there. Each fold gets a little bit harder because your paper is getting thicker. Now pull those back down again. Okay. So this is probably the hardest one you're going to have to do. You're going to lift up one side so that you're opening it up on the side. Okay? So open that up on the side with your finger. And then you take this leg that you just folded and you're going to reverse fold it. You're going to fold it inside. You're going to reverse fold those creases that you just made so that you've got this pointy thing sticking out on the side. Okay? Same thing on the other side. Open it up and fold this leg up, reverse folding it to the inside. And now, it's getting close to being a crane. One side is the head, one side is the tail. So the side that is the head, you're going to fold it down so that you can see the bird's beak. Okay? And this side here is the tail. Now you just have to fold the wings down. So I'll fold this one down. And turn it over and fold the other one down. And there she is. Now there's one more thing you can do. And if you turn it over upside down, there is like a little hole in the bottom that's made by all of these folds of the paper that you've made. There's a little hole that you really can't hardly even see it. But what you can do if you want to is to blow into that little hole and that will blow the crane's body up a little bit. Not a lot, it's really hard to blow it up, but give it a try if you want to. And it blows up a little bit so that he's got, you know, he's got some three-dimensionality now, this crane does. So there you go. Now, why do we make paper cranes? You know, in a lot of cultures, the crane is a bird that is thought to be a sacred bird. And in the Japanese culture, people fold paper cranes if they hope for healing. The crane represents the hope we have for healing, all kinds of healing, whether it's healing of our bodies from sickness, or healing of our hearts from being hurt by something, the healing of our whole community, of our whole world, when bad, hard things have happened. And a lot of hard and bad things have happened in our world lately. So I think that we need, very much need, to be hoping for healing. And so I'm going to ask you to fold some paper cranes. The tradition is a thousand paper cranes is what you fold for hope and healing. And I think we can do that. I think all together we can easily make a thousand paper cranes. I started on it yesterday. And I've got a few here. Okay, so why don't you join me and make some paper cranes too? Now, if you didn't quite catch it, that's okay. I told you it's a hard thing to do, and if you haven't done it before, then you're not going to learn it from just one time, probably. You're going to need a little practice and maybe have to watch it a few times. So one thing you can do is later on, you can um, look at the video of our worship on YouTube, because you can see it close up. I can't do it close up on Facebook Live, but the video camera that records for our YouTube video, that's, that'll have a nice close up, so you can see it better. Also, there's lots of other videos um, online on, on YouTube. There's lots of videos where you can see somebody showing you how to fold a paper crane. And there's also written instructions if you like that better. But let's see how many paper cranes we can make. And each time you fold a crane, let me suggest that you fold a prayer into each one. A prayer for healing, a prayer for peace in our world. Each crane you make, every fold you make, Say, God, let there be peace on earth. And let that be our prayer. Amen.
Brothers and sisters, will you pray with me? Almighty God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, speak to us in the language of our hearts, that we may hear your word with understanding and answer your call with confidence. Amen. Our scripture today is this familiar story from the second chapter of the book of Acts, verses 1 through 21. Listen now for the word of the Lord. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. <coughs> but Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoking mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On the day of Pentecost, a small band of disciples were hunkered down in their upper room. They were all together in one place, in one room. Everybody in that room had not very long before, you know, been part of the crowds who were gathered in the streets below. Not very long ago, they had been a part of that community. The people who made pilgrimage to Jerusalem for the Jewish festivals, that's what they had done themselves, in fact. Not very long ago for the Passover festival. About seven weeks earlier. But a lot had changed since then. Now their community was much diminished. Now their community was comprised of a group small enough to fit into this upper room. And sadly, the people in their room viewed many of those outside their room as enemies. It was kind of a low moment for the people of the way. They were still waiting on something, something. They didn't know what. The community of the people of the way, it was not strong yet. But something 
something was about to happen that would change all that, that something was the Holy Spirit. It came in with a violence that was shocking. The rush of a violent wind filling the entire house. Tongues of fire resting over every head. Sharp, shocking, violence. But not for the sake of violence. The Spirit brought gifts that shocked this little group into becoming a force for something much greater. For all the grace of God through Jesus Christ. The Spirit gave them power to speak languages they didn't know for the sake of creating community they could not yet imagine. And outside their window, down in the street below, there were crowds of people from all over the diaspora. Suddenly all of these diverse people could hear the words of love spoken in their own native languages. Something miraculous had happened. This little tribe in that upper room had suddenly forged connections with people of every nation, all who were gathered in the holy city for the festival of Pentecost. Now we know for sure that because of this Pentecost miracle, the good news would go with them, all of them, back to the nations that they call home. Community happened, and it was big, and it was love. It was gospel. And here's what it was not. Political, partisan, bigoted, divisive. Community in Christ is not tribal. Community in Christ is all about erasing the boundary lines. I struggled to write a Pentecost sermon this week because things kept happening. Things that made me continually ask, what is the real message of community for us today? How does the spirit of Pentecost speak in the world today? Throughout the country, as we continue to battle this pandemic, does the spirit speak into the divide that wants to turn public health into a political minefield, where the decision to wear a protective mask can derisively be called political correctness? How does the spirit speak into this mess? In the Pennsylvania State House, does the Spirit speak in the midst of extreme partisanship? So extreme that members of one political party decided to share news of a potential COVID-19 outbreak only with the members of their own party, hiding it from the opposing party. How does the Spirit speak into that mess? In Minneapolis, does the Spirit speak in literal flames of fire? People protesting a long history of police brutality towards black men and women reaching a boiling point. Yes, a boiling point. Their protests turned violent. Property was destroyed. But their message to the world is, do our lives not matter more than property? Are we not more than property? A man was killed in the streets by police officers for a counterfeit $20 bill. Are we not members all of the same community? How does the Spirit speak into such an unholy mess the scriptures speak to us of beloved community, boundaryless community. And I have spoken many times over these past 10 weeks or so about the beauty of community that connects us to one another, no matter where we are. The certainty that the Spirit of God 
can hold us together even when we are physically apart from one another. We are not bound by the former things, the old ways of thinking about what it means to be together, what it means to be community. We know that the Spirit of God moves where she will and how she will. She is untamed. She is free. But it grieves me to acknowledge that the ways of the Spirit do not come naturally to us. We look at others whose languages are different. And perhaps it's not the actual language that they speak. Or perhaps it is the lens through which they see the world. We don't all see the world the same way. There are differences by race, by culture, by education, by income level, by political affiliation. We don't all see the world the same way because the world has not treated us all the same way. Sometimes, we don't understand the others when they try to speak to us, and we condemn them. Beloved community does not come naturally to us. Grace does not come naturally to us. We need a miracle for that, a real miracle. And sometimes, we get one. In our Bible study last week, we read about a special bond that has been forged between two very unlikely groups, the people of Ireland and the Native Americans. A bond forged more than 150 years ago when the Choctaw Nation took up a collection for the Irish during their great famine. One people who were suffering saw a kinship with another suffering people. And so it happened that today, thousands of Irish citizens, thousands, have made donations to a fund set up to support the Navajo and Hopi elders during this pandemic, an effort to ensure that they just have enough food to eat and water to stay alive. One people who have a collective memory of suffering nurture the bonds of kinship with another. And the people of Ireland, they say they were guided by an old Irish saying that can be translated as, we live in each other's shadows. We live in each other's shadows simply meaning that we are all dependent on one another to shelter us from life's difficulties. We are all in this together, even if we cannot see it. We are all in need of one another to live and to flourish. The Navajo people have a similar guiding principle called Ki, which just simply means kinship, the kinship of all living things. So thousands of miles apart, speaking different languages, living in almost completely different worlds, community was forged by the power of compassion, a miracle, a miracle. Today on the state of Pentecost, we are community. Even while we are physically apart, we are community. Today, we are the church. Even while we are not together in this building. But that's not all. Brothers and sisters, we are commissioned by Christ to be his church wherever we are, in whatever ways the Spirit empowers us to be. We have been given the power of the Spirit to participate in and witness to miracles miracles. Now, let us put this power to work in a world that badly needs to see the miracle of community.
right now, share them in the comments if you would like to. Share them by sending an email to us or by calling in whatever way, reach out to us. And we all pray together, lifting up these things that if they are a concern of one, they are a concern of all. If they bring joy to one, they bring joy to all. And throughout this day and throughout this week, let us pray together for peace in our land. Let us pray for reconciliation. Let us pray for wholeness and flourishing among all of God's people. And let us pray for those members of our family who are in the process of recovering from surgeries, for those who may be in the process of making life decisions, for those who may be grieving. Let us keep all of these brothers and sisters in our prayers. And now we're going to do something that we haven't done for a while, really since we have been doing worship remotely. We are going to offer you an opportunity to give as a part of your spiritual practice. Well, I know that you do give and we appreciate that. But we're going to bring it into our worship because giving to God is indeed an act of worship. And so now I invite you with thanksgiving for God's gifts to us. Let us take this moment to offer ourselves for God's work in the world. Leading them out of slavery through a wilderness. 
Your spirit roused to the prophets who proclaimed your judgment upon the nations and called for repentance. For all the mighty acts of your spirit, we praise you. You are holy, O Lord, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son. By your spirit, you anointed him to bring good news to the poor and proclaim release to the captives. By your spirit, he confronted the demons of oppression. By your spirit, he is with us now at this table that he has prepared for us, feeding us, sustaining us, sanctifying us for his holy work. As we gather at his table, we remember how he gathered his friends at his table that night. And he took the bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his friends, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. And we remember that in the same way he took the cup. And he said, This is the new covenant poured out in my blood for the forgiveness of your sins. Take of it, drink of it, all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. Send your spirit upon us now, O oh God. Send your spirit upon this bread and wine. Let the bread we break and the cup we drink be the true fellowship in the body of Christ. Let the cup we share be a true participation in the new covenant of his blood. By your spirit, create in us the power of your redeeming love that we may be Christ for the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray, as we offer these words that he gave to us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, the body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, may we who have received this sacrament live in the unity of your Holy Spirit that we may show forth your gifts to all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us join together in song one more time, hymn number 539. We will go on with joy.
Friends, be a witness of the living Lord, who is Jesus Christ, who rose from the dead, who reigns with God in glory, and who sends the Holy Spirit to empower us to serve in his name. And may the grace of God bless you with peace. May the love of Christ sustain you with joy. And may the power of the Holy Spirit fill you with courage today and always. Amen.